In the Workshop, a Cotswold Heritage Atlas Steam Plant Part 11, the final episode of the series, fitting the replacement siren, but mainly just playing with the steam plant. This is the replacement siren because the original one was a bit intermittent, and the construction of this one is considerably different to the first one. It comes complete with some thread adapters, which unfortunately make the whole assembly much taller. The steam valve is different, it's a total redesign. As I changed the adapter for one with a quarter by 40 threads per inch thread, I was quite surprised when a spring fell out. The spring is what makes the valve work. The body of this new siren is also different. The main body has a much larger hole in the base into which the valve screws. The entire assembly, including the valve, is now much taller and it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the original valve. I unscrewed the valve from the main body of the siren in order to fit an o-ring to seal it. The o-ring wasn't supplied with the kit, but I have some in the workshop. So it's out with the old and in with the new. This is the original siren that I fitted to the top of the turret. And initially it worked fine, then it stopped working and wouldn't work again. With the adapter fitting removed, here's the turret without the siren. And here it is with the extremely tall new siren, which really I don't like the look of it, I'm sorry. Call me old-fashioned, but these kind of sirens were not fitted to steam plants of this kind. As far as I'm aware, they were usually fitted to traction engines. And now it's time for a proper steam test. That's the burner lit, and as you can see in this clip, when the burner's first lit, the flame is blue. But the ceramic head of the burner soon turns red as it warms up. There is some water in the boiler, but it does need a bit more. So here, I'm filling the reservoir tank with water, and I'm going to pump some more of this into the boiler. Normally I wouldn't replace the lid, but seeing as it's for the video, I did. And here's the hand pump at double speed, pumping the water into the boiler. As usual, while the boiler is raising steam, it's a good idea to lubricate the engine. And the rule for that is use good quality lubricating oil, and oil every moving part. Not forgetting to lubricate the inside of the cylinder, and this is done by filling the displacement lubricator. What I've just been doing though is draining the displacement lubricator from the previous run. After draining the water from the lubricator, I refill it with oil and replace the cap and tighten the valve at the bottom. Nothing's shown on the pressure gauge at the moment, but something's happening because there's a little bit of steam and water coming out of the safety valve. To warm up the cylinder of the engine, I opened the steam valve. I rotated the flywheel and it continued to rotate. Let the steam test begin. I thought it would take this opportunity while the pressure is still low to warm up the siren. There isn't enough pressure here to make the siren work and as you can see there's a lot of water coming out of the siren. The boiler has a steam dryer coil but by the time the steam gets down the pipe and into the turret it's not exactly superheated. Now for the proper siren test. Nothing yet and that's at 50 pounds per square inch. And now the boiler's blowing off at 60 pounds per square inch which is its working pressure and there's still no noise coming from the siren other than a watery whistling sound. At this point I turned off the gas, removed the siren and I'm trying it on compressed air. And there's still nothing. So I shut the valve on the top of the boiler, I'm opening the whistle valve to clear any pressure in the pipe, and here I'm refitting the original valve to the turret, but I'm not going to use a siren. Time to relight the boiler. A while back I bought this from Microcosm, and this is a bell whistle. It has its own steam valve, but the thread is a little bit too big to fit into the turret, and that's why I used the valve from the first siren. The reason why the bell whistle isn't blowing at the moment is because the boiler's nearly at working pressure, which is too high for the current physical setting, so I adjusted that. You will notice the gaps in the boiler cladding. This happens as the mahogany strips dry out and shrink. So after this steam test, I moved all of the cladding around the boiler to close these gaps. Then I inserted another piece of mahogany to fill the one big gap that I got at the back. Here I'm checking the amount of water in the boiler by blowing down the water gauge. It was a bit on the low side, so I'm pumping some more water in. 
What I'm doing in this clip is emptying the condenser. I've connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing to the condenser valve and by running the steam engine the exhaust back pressure forces the water out into a suitable receptacle which in this case is an old biscuit tin. You can see that the water is cloudy because it also has some steam oil in it. Time to give the whistle a test now I've adjusted it. Nothing wrong there, it sounds quite nice. I think a steam whistle is a better idea for this plant because the owner often will be running it on compressed air and that way his two young sons will be able to play with the steam plant without fear of getting burnt. But that wouldn't have been good for a steam siren which needs water and steam to lubricate it. So that's it for this series. This is the final part of the final episode. I'm just going to leave the engine running till the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.